My fellow citizens, let me start by expressing my heartfelt condolences to the families that have, have lost their loved ones these last few weeks. I feel your pain, and I know it will take time before meaningful healing comes. To those nursing injuries from the brute of Ruto's forces, in hospital beds and at home, I wish you quick recovery. May God console you. Kenyans, it is now exactly one month since the young people of Kenya came out in large numbers to assemble, demonstrate, picket, and petition their representatives to reject the finance bill 2024. The Gen Zs and millennials and Kenyans of goodwill, some young in body and some young at heart, together, stood together to say no to an oppressive tax regime. They also spoke unequivocally that they want a reformed government. Young people in Kenya are concerned about, one, poor agriculture production, which threatens our food adequacy, safety, and security. Two, parents, teachers, and learners alike are all confused by the CBC syllabus and transition. College and university education has been made too expensive and young Kenyans are not joining while others are dropping from colleges. Three, our healthcare is now completely broken with NHIF looted and left incapable of meeting claims by hospitals, some of which have now been forced to close down. Our infrastructure is crumbling Roads are not maintained, our ports are being auctioned, and basic access to water and electricity is out of reach to many Kenyans. The business environment has been destroyed by bad government policy in sector after sector. Foreign direct investment has gone down, and we have seen investors running away to neighboring countries, leaving Kenyans jobless. The unemployment rate has, skyro has skyrocketed. The cost of living has gone beyond the roof. And many Kenyans cannot afford a decent living. To make matters worse, a burdensome tax regime is squeezing every blood out of Kenyans, killing their businesses and making their products less competitive. Sensing individual and collective failure, the young people came out to demand that their president confront these challenges. Instead, what did the president do? Number one, he used goons and criminals to infiltrate peaceful demonstrations to get reasons to unleash violence against Kenyans. He used the police to unleash terror on young people. Resorted to abductions, forced disappearance, torture, killings, and mutilation of bodies of the Kenyan children. The president would winked us by withdrawing the finance bill, but continued to implement its draconian provisions. He deceitfully dissolved his cabinet on grounds of incompetence, only to reappoint the same crooks. He completely refused to listen to the issues raised by Kenyans and instead he, ra he raided the opposition to appoint cabinet secretaries in a bid to weaken oversight against his government and to gain cosmetic stability to consider the next general election 